Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on The Flash Season 7 and this is going to be my review for Episode 7 for this season, otherwise entitled Growing Pains. So uh, yeah, Episode 7 of Season 7. But of course, spoiler alert, because we're going to be going over everything that happened in this episode for the most part. So if you've not watched the episode yet, better off to, you know, you're better off going away and then come back later once you've watched it. But if you want to keep watching, that's up to you. But yeah, if you have watched the episode or you're just continuing on with the video in general, be sure to let me know your various opinions, thoughts, all of that in the comment section down below, general reactions to the episode. Very curious to see what you guys have to say. I was surprised there wasn't like a cliffhanger because for those that didn't know, this is the last episode for three weeks. The next episode isn't until May the 4th. So I'm surprised there wasn't a big cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, there's still a decent uh, amount to talk about in regards to this uh episode in general but yeah if you enjoyed the video it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show support uh for the video on the channel so last episode we obviously got introduced to the still force and we had that big time travel episode uh not a ridiculous amount happened outside of just some weird stuff going on with the speed force just didn't seem very trustworthy so that sort of continues on onto this episode but this it's sort of like a bridging episode for the most part in regards to that. Was, this episode really does just focus on Killer Frost and stuff going on. Or, or Killer Frost slash Frost slash Caitlyn. Um, so maybe next episode we'll have some Speed Force stuff. But then again, that episode will be Killer Frost related for the most part as well. So it'll be interesting to see when they dive into that more. But something's up there. I still don't trust it at all. But yeah, we start off the episode, speaking of the Speed Force, we have breakfast at the West Allen household with the Master Shelf, uh, Master Shelf? They're not a shelf. The Master Chef themselves, that being the Speed Force, making up one hell of a breakfast. Now, it is very interesting to see Barry referring to it as the Speed Force, but then we have Iris referring to it as Nora. Uh, you can just see the difference there, and you can tell it makes Barry a bit awkward. He just doesn't feel, he just doesn't feel comfortable I guess with Iris saying that, but he doesn't want to, I guess, say to Iris, don't do it, especially in front of the Speed Force. But in regards to, you know, uh, Barry himself, his powers are glitching out. We did see that in the trailer um, for this episode, and that's obviously due to the Speed Force being there, and apparently she is increasing his powers, and it will take some getting used to. Whether that's the truth or not, that's for us to wait and find out. You never know, it could be something to do with the other forces, and that's why Barry's powers are glitching out. Um, but that's the... Uh, reasoning that we're given at this stage at the very least. Now, we did have Cecile going over the crimes of Killer Frost in the past and the charges were never dropped despite everything that has happened since that point in time. Uh, but Frost isn't too happy about it. She's like standing off and not happy about being put in quarantine, similar to what we saw at the end of last episode, I think it was, with her and Joe. So she continues that same sort of um, mindset, if you want to call it, um, which doesn't lead to the best outcome in this episode. But... Um, Gotta live your life, I guess. Now, one thing we'd seen a lot of the promo material was this crime scene at Ivo Labs, and Chester's excited to be taking part, pretty much filling that void that Cisco has left, because he would usually be that metahuman task investigator person, but Chester's playing that role this episode. He's filling in, and there's an ice-related crime that's taking part there, and with a murder as well, with stolen with a stolen microchip, uh, chip, not, not multiple, I think just one microchip. There's a shattered body there, so that's the the murder. It's a bit gross. At least we don't have to see someone getting frozen and smashed into a million pieces. Maybe you would have liked to have seen that. I don't know. But Kristen Kramer, I don't think anyone's necessarily loving Kristen Kramer. Like, I'm not saying the actress is doing a bad job, but like, it's a character that you're made to not like, if that makes sense. So she shows up and is straight to blaming Frost for it all. And Barry and the others are defending Frost, but Barry's about to go over the top. So he's lucky that Joe's there. But they are stuck in this pickle where they can't overly defend Frost. I think we might see that next episode as well without giving away that they are in like cahoots with her. That like, you know, she's a part of Team Flash and they, you know, talk to her. You know, talking with a fugitive, a fugitive, especially Barry and Joe, seeing they're part of the CCPD. So they have to prove her innocent or at least get her out of this sticky situation in another way without giving themselves up and getting, getting themselves in trouble. But once again just in the whole acting weird sort of realm, we have Nora or the Speed Force mainly showing up at the crime scene, just acting weird. I am just curious to see when all this just plays out and we, because it, it just seems weird. It, it, to me, it's just overly weird. Some might disagree, but surely it comes to a head and there's a bit of an exposed thing going on, but something's weird. And Barry as well as Iris are getting played in my opinion, but let's see where it goes. 
But Frost on her, you know, <laughs> breaking quarantine, is that, was that a COVID reference? I don't know. But anyway, uh, breaking quarantine at a bar, meets this nice bartender whose name is Mark. Well, at least he's nice at first because it goes downhill pretty quickly. But she's, you know, bad timing being in that bar as the warrant for her arrest with the big reward, I think it was $100,000 or something like that, was aired on TV by Kristen Kramer. I uh, did have the, the Frost versus the other attendees at the bar in a big fight. I thought... That, I think I thought it was actually pretty well done. And that whole scene was probably one of the few times that music worked in a fight scene. There's been more than just like one or two, but I'd say most of the times there's music in a fight scene, uh, especially on The Flash, it just doesn't work. But it threw me really off, really, really off when Hot In Here by Nelly started playing. I was like, what the hell? And I couldn't get the song out of my head for the rest of the episode. I was just like, it's getting, you know, <laughs> it, it threw me off. Threw me off at the moment, threw me off for the rest of the episode while watching because I had it stuck in my head. Especially when like Frost and Mark, the bartender on scene, that's uh, on screen, sorry. That's all I could think about is hard in here. Um, threw me off heaps, so random. But one of the more interesting things uh, or scenes was when we had Chester wanting to use the Speed Force, aka Nora there, and use her help for like processing everything that they have because she's all powerful and everything and knows they're all. But, but Barry then, then does have this power glitch due to the speed force being there and his powers being out of control and everything. And it destroys the computer in the in the forensic lab with the content to clear frost. Obviously this leads Barry being upset with the speed force. This is, this is resolved later on. But as I said, like I, I do wonder what they're just doing with the speed force in general. And just the show make me maybe making the like Barry and even Iris looking a bit silly that it's just a bit suspect that the speed force would want to be in this physical form for so long. Um, we'll have to wait and see where it goes, but I, I still have my suspicions. It's dodgy. I don't trust it. Now, Frost arrives at this like bogey location with nothing in there. We learn what happened later on where actually that security thing that scanned her was actually, um, to copy her, uh, like her, like power thing. I, I don't know the term that they use, but like how she's made up in regards to her meta and dark matter and power set and everything like that. But then Caitlin is actually arrested for the crimes of Killer Frost at the exact same time. Now, Joe is forced to take part. He's actually the one that puts the medicuffs on Caitlin. But he almost, like, gives this look to Caitlin, like, of just, like, you know, just trust me on all this. Like, that sort of look. Like, it wasn't like Joe came in, barged the door down, and was really angry at Caitlin. He just sort of gave her that look. And Caitlin eventually will be cleared when no meta material is found within her. But the bigger issue is that someone you know, set them up as someone that knows that Caitlin Snow was Killer Frost and all connected in that manner. And there is just like dodgy evidence attached to the crime scene as well, like with fingerprints that don't match up with a master criminal that Killer Frost is labeled as, like all these fingerprints on the van, would they even do that? You know, it, it doesn't really line up. It seems like a bit of a botched job. But Chester does figure out that the person who committed the crime early in the episode actually wasn't a metahuman. They were fooling everyone with like fake or artificial dark matter. And it's then where we see Frost figuring out that it was actually Mark the bartender who is behind it all. And we get this like sort of like quick backstory, which um, wasn't overly interesting, but it just like it's very ice related. So we learned that Mark worked at Ivo Labs, which does connect to that crime scene, which I thought was smart. So he... Uh, steals that microchip, but we learned that it was actually his creation. It was, he created it. And he does have this like sort of interesting background involving ice and hypothermia, but he does reveal himself as Chillblain. That's his name. That's the villain from the comics who in the comics is like a rip off Captain Cold and they've changed him to sort of, you know, replicate Killer Frost, which I don't mind. I think it, if you're going to do it that way, then make it work like that. And I think it'd work better if you want to use the, the character on the show in that manner, then make him Captain Cold. And that's mainly because Captain Cold's dead. So I don't know how people would react to if it was just a Captain Cold ripoff with Captain Cold being dead. I think it's better being the other way around with Killer Frost. But you never know. If he appears again, maybe he's the Captain Cold ripoff with a gun. We know he's not a meta, so I have to wait and see. But instead of a gun, like in the comics, he has these cool high-tech gloves that sort of replicate Frost's powers. They have this big fight. I thought it was pretty cool, like using the ice powers to bounce off walls and stuff. I thought that was done pretty well. But Frost stabs through herself, if that makes sense, with one of her ice spear things to take out Chillblade. Now, he doesn't die. He ends up going to Iron Heights due to his previous grievances, which he did bring up. Now, he's meant to be in more episodes. I have no idea when that is, but I don't think that's meant to be the hit, like the, the last of him. So, because they made like a big press release with this casting. So, I'd have to assume... Maybe 
episode nine or 10 or something, he might show up again. We'll have to wait and see, but um, this isn't meant to be the last of him. Now, Frost is found by Kristen Kramer and her crew. Now, Frost surprisingly gives herself up so others don't have to cover for her and, uh, cover for her and put themselves in more danger and stuff like that. Um, like she is an innocent, she admits that, but she has changed. I think we all know that as well. And even when she walked out, Kristen Kramer looked almost like shocked. Um, that Frost actually gave herself up, but then like happy at the same time because she's like, well, I've got the person I've been after. Now where this plays off next week, the next, e- or not next week, sorry, next episode, because we have this three week break. That episode is called the people versus killer Frost. We have this like court trial going to be interesting to see what happens there. Will Frost get off or will she actually be going to Iron Heights? And could that potentially change her? Allegra was talking about that. Maybe Frost is confident that she won't change in prison. But how do we know as the audience that this is the last of like, quote unquote, good Frost? Maybe she goes to Iron Heights and turns bad again. How do we know that doesn't happen? It could. I'm intrigued to see where it goes, especially if she actually does officially go to Iron Heights and found guilty with everything. She pleads guilty so it's really up to the, the judge with the evidence and stuff. But man, if she actually goes to Iron Heights for a while, then we might be seeing a villainous Killer Frost back in action. And as I sort of alluded to earlier in the episode, the Speed Force and Barry make up. So let's see where that goes next. I, I don't even, it's, there's no point overthinking it now based off what we saw in the episode, but I still don't trust it. But yeah, overall, I thought this was a fun episode for what it was. Uh, it didn't really carry on anything really with, even though the Speed Force was, Speed Force was there, sorry, didn't really carry on any of that. It really was with the the Frost and Killer Frost and Chillblade stuff. And for what it was, I thought it was pretty entertaining. And obviously it's going to continue next week. So um, I guess we're, well, not sorry, not next week. I keep saying next week, next episode after this break. So in episode eight. So I guess that will be like the second part. This is almost like a two-part episode which we usually get. Usually what we'd get sometimes is like a episode seven or eight would be a two part episode or sometimes it'd be like 13 and 14 in previous seasons. So this seems to be filling in that sort of role for this season. So uh, I'm intrigued to see how they wrap it up if you want to call it, or at least, you know, finish this trial for Killer Frost. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it for what it was and uh, had some random moments like hot in here. So yeah. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could, uh, you know, drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on this episode. I'm always curious to hear what you guys have to say and any theories you have, let me know. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.